Hi, uh, this is Mike Gillahan, and uh, this video is to uh, go along with the flutes that I'm sending out mainly as Christmas presents. Um, and uh, I just wanted people to know a few things about the flute that they have uh, that'll help them as they start playing the flute. Uh, first and foremost, when you take the flute out of the bag, the first thing to do is to make sure that the block is still tied on well and the block is this wooden piece here. Yours will have a fancier block on it. This is just a piece of wood I put on here which works for a block for demonstration purposes here. Uh, and that block should be tied on snugly, not super tight. And the front edge of the block, the very front bottom edge of the block, should basically be lined up with the sound hole down there. The back edge of the sound hole should be lined up with that back edge of the block. If it's not, if it's pushed forward or if it's back too far, your flute might sound funny or might not even make a sound. So you need to line that up just with the back edge of that. And you can experiment by moving it little bits forward and backwards if you want. But uh, yeah, a good starting place is just lined up with that right there. Once that's done, uh, to play the flute, you just blow into it and the holes that you cover will change the tone that you're blowing into it, of course, or the tone that the flute makes. Um, the note that it makes. With all of them covered, you'll get the primary note of the flute. Most of the flutes that I'm sending out are in the key of A. And that's basically the sound you'll get when you blow through there. As you uncover the notes from the bottom going up, the notes get higher. And uh, another thing you'll notice is that, uh, and you'll learn this as you play, as you play the higher notes, it's t the flute takes a little bit more of a push of air to make those notes. As you play the lower notes with more holes covered, uh, it doesn't take quite as much air to make that happen. And if you do put too much air in when you have all the holes covered, you may overblow the flute, which makes a sound like this. it goes to an octave of what that note is. Uh, so uh, the other thing that's very important when you're first learning how to play these flutes is that when you have a hole covered, all the holes above that hole should also be covered. In other words, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is not okay because you can see this hole is uncovered when the notes below it are all, all covered, or covered to a point. So anytime you have a note uncovered, all the holes above it, the last one that's covered, should also be covered. So if you do this, you're gonna play the pentatonic scale on this flute. And what the pentatonic scale is a five note scale, actually six, if you take the octave note as well and add it to it, but all of those notes sound good next to any other of those notes, meaning you can play any combination of those notes and you won't hear what sounds like a sour note anywhere. But if I start uncovering notes above the lowest one that's covered, I'll get weird sounds. So remember, when you're first starting out, if you have a hole covered, all the holes above it should be covered as well. Now I do say when you're first starting out because later, once you learn how to play like this, you can add some cross fingerings where you do have some notes uncovered above a note that's covered. Uh, that actually the progression into that becomes natural as you learn how to play. Many people though only play the pentatonic scale and do just fine because 
Native American music is mostly just about all in the pentatonic scale, and it just sounds beautiful. If you stick to the pentatonic scale, meaning whatever the lowest covered note is, all the notes above that are covered, you can get to where you sound very good very quickly. As my mentor says, uh, once you get the flute, you start to play it within three weeks, you're ready to cut your album. pentatonic scale. Um, the other thing is you can just play the notes cleanly if you like and make it sound almost like an orchestral instrument or you can add some embellishments to it as you play and you can start doing this early on too. A simple scale sounds like this. You can add some embellishments just by possibly fluttering a note. It's not difficult to do. Anybody can take their finger and raise it and put it down over that hole. Another trick you can do is when you're playing a long note, you can make a little chirp. And this is where we slightly break a rule and open a finger up uh, above a hole that's closed just quickly once or twice. So you can incorporate that into your playing as well. Uh, watch this video again. Try playing the flute. My advice is that you take this instrument and you set it down on the coffee table in front of your favorite chair. Every time you sit down, pick it up and play it a little bit. And when you do that, after a while, you're going to find, hey, this isn't so bad. This instrument is fantastic for improvisation. Using that pentatonic scale, like I said, any of the notes sound good next to any of the other notes. So you can just play to your heart's content just about any combination of notes that you want, and it's going to sound pretty good. I hope you enjoy this. If you have any uh, questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks.